Many children have medical conditions that require medication to be given while they are attending childcare. However, most childcare programs do not have medically trained staff on site who are licensed to administer medication. Fortunately, the regulations that govern licensed childcare programs allow for staff to be trained and approved to administer medication to children, provided certain requirements are satisfied. This presentation will help you understand the requirements that must be satisfied when trained and approved providers and staff administer medications in licensed child care programs. This presentation will address the basic requirements that pertain to the administration of medications. This presentation will cover what is a medication and what is not a medication, different types of medications, the impact of the Americans with Disabilities Act on medication administration in licensed child care programs, the requirements for policies and procedures, the requirements for the administration of non-prescription topical medications and other medications, self-administration of medications, and requests for special medication authorization. Before we begin, it is important to understand what a medication is. A medication is any medicinal preparation, prescription or non-prescription drug, including controlled substances. Sunscreens and insect repellents are not considered medications. Therefore, the requirements outlined in this presentation do not apply to these products. It is recommended, however, that licensed childcare providers choosing to use these products obtain written parent permission and incorporate their use into the childcare's policies. There are many different types of medication. The first type of medication are those that are taken orally or by mouth. These are the most common and are generally in the form of a capsule, tablet, or liquid. Next, we have topical medications, which are applied directly to the skin or mucous membrane. These are generally in the form of a lotion, ointment, cream, drops, or patch. Inhalant medications are those that you breathe directly into your lungs. Examples are inhalers and nebulizers. Injectable medications are liquids that are put into the body, usually with a needle, which pierces through the skin. Some examples of injectable medications are EpiPens, insulin, and glucagon. Lastly, we have rectal medications, which are generally in the form of a suppository or enema, which is inserted directly into the rectum. In addition to distinguishing medication by the route they are administered, medications fall into two categories. First, there are those that are non-prescription or more commonly referred to as over-the-counter medications. These medications can be bought without a prescription. Examples of non-prescription medications include bacitracin, Tylenol, aspirin, cough syrup, and Benadryl. The second category of medications are those that are prescribed by a medical provider. A person cannot go into a store and buy these medications without a prescription. Examples of prescription medications include Ritalin, Concerta, birth control pills, and asthma medication. It is important to recognize that all licensed childcare must comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act, otherwise known as the ADA. This federal law specifies that no child with a disability, such as diabetes, may be excluded from participation from childcare simply because of that disability. When establishing the program's policies and procedures for the administration of medication, you should always consider the licensing requirements and the requirements of the ADA. You may also wish to consult with an attorney. Licensed child care programs that administer any type of medication must have written policies and procedures that outline how the program will manage medication administration and reflect current best practice. The policies and procedures shall include the types of medication that will be administered, parental responsibilities, staff responsibilities, proper storage and labeling of medication, and record keeping. These policies and procedures shall be maintained on site at the child care program so that they are readily available to program staff and also licensing staff during site inspections. Once developed, programs are then required to follow these policies and procedures. 
Common types of non-prescription topical medications that are used in child care programs are ointments free of antibiotics, antifungal and steroidal components, medicated powders, gum, and lip medications. Before administering any non-prescription topical medication, written parental permission must be obtained and shall be kept on file at the child care program. Parental permission must include a statement indicating that the medication has been previously administered without adversely affecting the child. Should a medication error occur, the parent shall be immediately notified. Written notification shall also be sent to the parent within 72 hours of the error. Such error shall also be documented in the child's health record. Let's discuss proper storage and labeling for non-prescription topical medications. Medication is to be stored in the original container away from food and inaccessible to children. Also, each container or packaging shall contain the individual child's name, the name of the medication, and directions for the medication's administration. Unused medication shall be returned to the child's parent. Expired medication shall be destroyed by staff in a safe manner or returned to the child's parent. This presentation will now move on to medications other than non-prescription topical medications. Before a provider or staff may administer this type of medication, they must be trained in the administration of medications. This training must be taught by a physician licensed to practice medicine in any state or a pharmacist physician assistant, advanced practice registered nurse, or registered nurse licensed in Connecticut. The training must cover specific content that is clearly spelled out in the licensing regulations, including the methods of administration, techniques to encourage children that are reluctant to take medication, recognition of side effects and follow-up actions, avoidance of medication errors, abbreviations, documentation, safe handling, and proper storage. In addition, staff shall complete training specific to the type of medication to be administered, such as oral, topical, inhalant, injectable, or rectal medication. Trained staff are required to be on site at the child care program whenever a child who has an order for medication is present. Upon completion of the required training, the trainer shall issue a written approval verifying the completion of the training. This is a sample approval form that can be found on the OEC website. The written approval shall include the signature of the trainer and identification information of the trainer and trainee, the date and location of the training, verification that the required curriculum was covered and successfully mastered by the trainee, the route of administration that the individual is approved to administer, and the expiration date of the approval. Approval for the administration of oral, topical, inhalant, rectal medications, and injectable medications other than by a pre-measured commercially prepared auto injector shall remain valid for three years. Approval for the administration of injectable medication by a pre-measured commercially prepared auto injector is valid for only one year staff must maintain current approval. A copy of this approval, along with an outline of the training, shall be maintained on site at the child care program for a period of three years and available to licensing staff upon request. Unlike non-prescription topical medications, an order from an authorized prescriber is required in addition to parent permission in order to administer all other types of medications. This includes over-the-counter medications such as Tylenol, Benadryl, or medication prescribed by a healthcare provider. A medication shall not be administered without this documentation. Furthermore, medication shall only be administered in accordance with a written order of the authorized prescriber. The parent shall be notified immediately of any medication error and notified in writing not later than 72 hours after the medication error occurred. The error shall be documented in the medication administration record. Significant medication errors that are potentially serious or have serious consequences for the child shall also be reported immediately to the OEC by telephone, 
and in writing not later than the next business day. Each time a medication other than non-prescription topical medication is administered, this must be documented in the child's file. The written record is called a Medication Administration Record, or MAR. The regulations are very specific of what information must be documented in the MAR. This information includes the date, time, and dosage of each administration of the medication, and the signature of the individual giving the medication. The MAR shall be kept on file at the child care program for at least two years after the child is no longer attending the program. Medication errors shall be logged and recorded in the MAR. All logs of medication errors should be reviewed weekly by the physician or advanced practice registered nurse. A written record of the review and any recommendations made shall be kept on file at the child care program. Medication other than non-prescription topical medications shall be stored in the original child resistant safety container. These medications shall be stored in a locked area, locked container in a refrigerator away from food, or locked container according to manufacturer's directions. Controlled drugs should be double locked Keys should be accessible only to staff authorized to administer medications. The label shall include the child's name, name of medication, directions, and the date of the prescription. Emergency medication, EpiPen, Glucagon, Rescue Inhaler, may be stored unlocked for quick access provided this medication is stored safely and inaccessible to other children. All unused or expired medications, except controlled medications, shall be returned to the parent or disposed of in the presence of a witness, if not picked up after seven days of the child's departure. You may contact the Department of Consumer Protection for proper instruction regarding disposal of controlled medications. The child care shall keep a written record of all medications destroyed, which shall be signed by two parties and maintained at the child care for three years. Children enrolled at the child care program may self-administer medications with the written permission of an authorized prescriber and the child's parent. Children may request and receive assistance in opening containers or packages or replacing lids. Medications to be self-administered shall be stored in the same manner as described earlier in this presentation for medications other than non-prescription topical medications. A written order from an authorized prescriber and written parent permission must be on file at the child care program for the specific medication. Staff trained in that medication modality shall be on site whenever a child who self-administers is on site. A child care program may submit a written request to the Office of Early Childhood for unlicensed staff to administer medication in a licensed child care program by a method other than oral, topical, inhalant, a pre-measured commercially prepared auto-injector, injectable, or rectal. For example, a request may be submitted to administer medication via a feeding tube. In order to do this, a written application would need to be submitted to the Office of Early Childhood. This application would include a written order from an authorized prescriber, a plan that identifies how the provider and staff will be trained, a list of staff that will participate in the training, written permission from the child's parent, and any other information necessary to evaluate the request. A checklist of items required for the request for special medication authorization can be found on the Office of Early Childhood website. We hope this presentation helped you become more familiar with the requirements for unlicensed staff to administer medications in licensed child care programs. Please remember that this presentation highlighted some of the key requirements of the licensing statutes and regulations, but it did not cover all the requirements pertaining to medication administration. It is important that you review the licensing statutes and regulations to familiarize yourself with all of the requirements. These statutes and regulations can be found on the Office of Early Childhood's website. Sample forms that satisfy the documentation requirements referenced in this presentation can also be found on the website. If you have any questions, 
please do not hesitate to call the Licensing Division's Help Desk and speak with licensing staff.